Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh crap. So today today is an exciting day. It's been an exciting last couple of days, honestly, the last few days. Like first we got like oh there might be something on, on the horizon for Dune. Everyone was like, oh maybe maybe they're going to release something about Dune. Could be a trailer, could be something. And then they released that 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 cool picture with Timote, got the ships floating, and they hint like, oh, today, today, and tomorrow, there's gonna be more. It's gonna be more. And now we've seen what the more is. Uh, so many more new images for the new Dune film. Holy crap! I did a short video about it earlier. I've looked over the more. We're gonna talk about them in more detail here. I'll take any questions that you guys got, whatever. Ah, like, oh my God, it's so exciting. I said on Twitter earlier today that I am so happy to be alive at the same time that Denis Villeneuve is making Dune. And I know that just sounds like insane hyperbole, but it's like so true. Like all of the ingredients seem to be coming together perfectly now. You've got such a great director and such a great cast, and such a great team. I do agree the article was horrible, whoever said that. That article was just like, what, the, who wrote this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> both articles have been, I, I, I didn't even check and see if like the same person wrote both of them, but yeah, articles, yeah, not, not feeling them. Oh, I got a super chat earlier before the streaming was started from Matt Cheer. Thank you very much, Matt Cheer. Heck yeah. Oh, Chris Wilson says they've edited the article since it was published this morning. Interesting. Yeah, there was like some there was some crap in there. I don't know what was going on. Yeah, but you know, I don't typically read Vanity Fair. I don't even think I'm their typical audience. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Vanity Fair seems like something that's for like a a generation past and like I don't know who gets their news from places like this anymore. They would have been better I don't, I don't whatever. <laughs> whatever, whatever. Anyway, we're going to talk about these these awesome new pictures that just got released. Everyone is super excited. Everyone's posting videos. Everyone's posting about the new Dune junk. Um, my God, I haven't been this excited about something in a very long time. In a very long time. I can't even think of the last time. Certainly not Game of Thrones Season 8. Certainly like certainly not, not any of the most recent Game of Thrones seasons. But this... Oh my god, I feel like I've been waiting for like four years for this movie to come out. Like, oh, and now it's right on the precipice. We are so close. Oh my god, and I just know it's gonna be epic. I just know it's gonna be fantastic. Oh, uh, Drew's book reviews is a new member. Thank you so much. Yeah, by the way, YouTube memberships are a thing on this channel now. I was planning on I was gonna start streaming more. You can be a YouTube member and get badges and get emojis and all that jazz. So yeah, if you hit the join button, there's like tears and junk. You can be a Theta King. You can be a wildling, whatever you want. Uh, Mar Mariana says, when is it coming out? December 18th, the movie is scheduled for release on December 18th. It does not seem like it's been postponed as I said in my video on that. But yeah, let's get into um, all the junk that came out today and just really, really look at it now. All right, let's do this. Um, like this, no, like this. So here's, 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 um, the image of freaking Paul and Jessica that we got. And I really, what's interesting about the still suits here is that you can see they, and there's another picture too of Javier Bardem later on. Let me just go to that one too. So you can see it here. I like that. It's not just the still suit like it was in David Lynch's Dune. It's just like the black still suit, whatever. And I think I have a picture of that too. I've got a picture of the, well, maybe I don't, whatever. You know how it is in the David Lynch one. It's just like black, nothing. There's no kind of like culture or dormant. I like that here it's like robes, cape, headdresses. Give the Fremen some freaking culture. Yeah, I'm super into that. So the still suits are looking really, really good. Um, I like the different like little sections and pieces to them. They look functional. They look like they could function. Uh, they got the nose pieces in there. Um, 
you got to have the nose pieces, right? You can't be walking around in the desert without wearing your nose piece. I mean, in the book, it's actually it's actually a face mask that you have to wear because the whole thing, okay, if you don't get still suits, because I know we're getting a bunch of new Dune people coming in because everyone's excited about Dune now. So the whole point of a still suit in the Dune universe is that Arrakis is a very dry planet. All of the water, all of the moisture on this planet is contained at the center of it, and it does not disperse to the rest of the planet. So water is very, very rare on Arrakis. So when you are in the deep desert, you pretty much don't travel by daytime, and it looks like um, it might be becoming night here. Well, you got to get some day shots for a movie anyway. But like typically in the book, the Fremen travel by night, as a way to just like kind of avoid the heat. And also the purpose of the still suit is, is that it recycles your water. So it recycles your sweat, uh, it recycles waste, and it's just got a, like a whole system that keeps flowing and flowing and there's like a mouthpiece that you can drink out of. Um, there's an interesting um, part of um, the, the one of the books, God Emperor of Dune, where a character is walking around the desert because walking around the desert without their face mask and you kind of see the impacts of it, how quickly they begin to lose water uh, uh, versus someone that has on a still suit and has it properly adorned and junk like that. So yeah, I like these still suits. I like that they look super functional. I like that they've also, they're also incorporating like robes and hoods and stuff with them. Yeah, super down for this. And I got a super chat from Christopher Cotton. Thank you so much for your super chat. It's greatly appreciated. All right. So everyone's saying, I like this still suit. It's much more practical. I agree. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. The David Lynch ones just kind of look like, I don't even know. They they It kind of looks, it, they don't look functional in the David Lynch movie. It just looks like a bunch of little section things and zipper maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Not saying that the David Lynch ones look bad. I just think these ones are superior to my eyes. I just really dig this look. And yeah, there is a face mask I see right here too. Um, so it looks like the face mask actually is a part of the still suit, which is, uh, I love that. <laughs> I love it. She's got it off now because I guess they were looking at something in the distance. But the fact that the face mask is there, it's just, ah, uh, that just shows me just like, such close attention to the source material, man. Didn't even know gets it. I'm telling you guys, I'm I'm, I'm excited about this. Like, let's see what's the next image we're gonna look at here. I was I talked about this a little bit in my in the little video that I did earlier. I love 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 the way the eyes look. Right, this is the most accurate that the spice eyes, the eyes of Ibad has ever been done in any Dune thing ever. Because the eyes shouldn't just be glowing like White Walkers, like 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 Draugr's in Skyrim. It's not glowing eyes. They, they, it's just blue within blue. It's a deep blue. The eyes don't become luminescent. So I like it like this. It looks way more subtle like this. I know a lot of people were like, oh, you have to make them glow for cinematic reasons. I disagree. I don't think you do. And I think this right here is like a perfect balance. And I love it. And yes, Edward Martin Zendaya is quite beautiful. And Zendaya is, of course, playing Chani, who is the future love interest of Paul Atreides. And she is her own character as well. And you see a little bit more of the expansion of the character Chani in the book Dune Messiah, especially. Um, yeah, but we gotta wait for that. We got if if we are to get a sequel, um, we gotta we gotta wait to the other half of the first book is uh, been adapted first. And I also want to talk about too later how I think the structure of the movie is going to go down. How I think they're going to order things now that I've seen a little bit more. And yeah. So we've known for quite some time they were going to split it into two films. But now that I've seen more, I'm going to go over how I think beginning, middle, and end is going to go. Because I think we're going to, we're probably going to end up spending a little bit more time on Caladan. And that we probably won't even see Arrakis until maybe even like the halfway point of the movie. But let's, we'll get into that later after we're done going through all this. All right, yeah, so accurate eyes of Ibad. I totally dig that. That makes me so happy. All right. Let's see what's next. Oh my God, yes, let's talk about this. Holy fucking shit. 
House of Trades, man. Here we go, man. Freaking House of Trades in the freaking flesh. There they are, man. There they are. Um, I forget which actor was playing Dr. Yui. I don't know if he's present here. I don't think so. But yeah, it looks like we got Timothée Chalamet as Paul Atreides. We've got Thufir Howard right here. We've got uh, freaking Duke Leto and Lady Jessica. Okay, one thing about the way Lady Jessica is dressed, I love it because she looks like kind of a mysterious kind of priestess. A mysterious priestess. Very just like poised and just regal and just like strong. I very much love just like everything about the way she's standing, the way her hair is done, the way she's posing. It's just so elegant and graceful. I just, I really, 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 really dig that. Um, so yeah. And then of course we got Gurney Halleck right here. I hope the Balasat makes an appearance. Um, we gotta find it. We gotta find a curious way to do the ballast set. Like if you don't know, in the novels, the character, the character Gurney Halleck has a ballast set, which is like this weird instrument from the future that he plays. He's got this really beautiful music, but like David Linda tried to do it, but it's like, uh. so that, typically with something like that, when it's described, you can imagine like the beauty of the sound of the music, but when you actually bring it to screen and you actually have to create it, it's a very delicate process. Otherwise, you can really mess it up. But yeah, here's hoping that they found an interesting way to perhaps bring in uh, Gurney's Balasat. <laughs> and then next right here, we got freaking Jason Momoa, Cal Drogo as freaking Duncan Idaho. I think he looks pretty good. I think he cleaned up pretty nicely for this role. I, I, I think he's looking, and there's another one of him as Duncan Idaho as well. Yeah, so I like how he's out front. Like he's, he's yeah. Don't mess with us. Yeah, so this is this is looking really good, man. House of Trades. I, I dig the hawk in the background. The hawk is looking really good. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, man. I'm just really excited about this. And I'm 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 I've this is um one of the second images that we've seen of Timote. I like the way it's interesting, his demeanor that I'm starting to pick up on. He seems like he's just like they're portraying Paul as kind of this very like brooding character. He's kind of like always in his head. Maybe he's got his hand on his back watching everything, which I mean, that is kind of Paul. He's very alert. He's hyper alert because of his training, Benny Gesserit, Mintat, all those things. But yeah, everyone looks good. Everyone looks good. I, I don't have anything to say against the look, but um. I do want to address one complaint that I saw. I want to address one complaint that I did not agree with. Someone was saying that all of these costumes were too kind of, they weren't decadent enough because Dune was meant to express that the nobles had become very decadent and kind of overdid things and overspent things. But, you know, this is House Atreides. House Atreides was never like that. House Atreides didn't fall on the decadent side. And there's even a scene in Dune when the Atreides get to Arrakis. There's this, there's this tradition that when the dinner guests are over, they all like dip their hands in this thing of water and they splash it on the ground. And then servant girls come up and they, they soak up the water and they squeeze it into little cups and they sell it to people on the street. Because if you don't understand the situation on Arrakis, there's no water on Arrakis. It's very dry. Water is very, very valuable. So th that was one of the signs of decadence, which that might even be, that scene might even be in the movie. But Leto sees this and he's like, no, we're not doing this anymore. Water is too precious to waste. You know what? And everybody, they can have as much water as they want. He's like, when we're, when we have like guest over, they can, they can take as much water as they want. So Leto was never like that. The Atreides were never like that. The Atreides inspired love and loyalty. And, you know, that's what makes them such great kind of heroes initially. That's what makes you want to root for Leto. But, th well, that's what makes you, that, that's what makes you want to root for House Atreides. But as a lot of you know, like things unfold and you see that people are just people. Humans are just humans, you know. But, yeah, we begin to see the flaws in, in certain characters. But, you know, that's what that was initially. That's the way the Atreides are seen. That's the way they are. Okay, so yeah, my God, so, so exciting. Let's go to the next image that we got queued up here. 
All right, we were looking at this one earlier. This is actually, just go into this one just a little bit more. This is actually, I think, the first actual set photo that we got of Denny Villeneuve himself on set, which makes his image kind of like precious. Um, yeah, everyone just looks so into it. I love it, man. It looks like if if Denny Villeneuve just stepped out of the frame a little bit, it's just like, this is Arrakis, baby. I'm living for it. I'm living for it. I'm living for the look of the Fremen, as I said earlier. Hopefully we can see a little bit more of the Fremen later too. But yeah, I'm, I'm living for the look of the still suits, the adornments. And yeah, Denny Villeneuve seems super into it. Honestly, Javier Bardem in this particular image kind of looks like he's had a kind of a long day. He looks like he's like about ready, about done at this point. But yeah, the whole the whole aesthetic and the look of it is like I'm I'm digging it. Someone's saying the nose pieces are straight out of David Lynch. They are similar, and there are some. There were a couple beats that I saw, kind of pulled out of David Lynch because there were some good things about the David Lynch movie. I did do a video criticizing the David Lynch movie and you know some problems with it, but I ultimately I do like that movie. But yeah. It had some it has some good things going for it for sure. But hopefully Denny Villeneuve can make some improvements on that with his two films. And maybe more. Okay, now this is this is badass. Oh my god. So here we got here we got freaking Gurney Halleck all armored up in uh, maybe Atreides armor, I guess that would be. And then you can see the Atreides freaking sigil on the back of the ship. Oh <laughs> this is this is this is badass, man. This is this is such an epic pick, such an epic shot. Like I am, I am here for this. This is awesome. This is awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. It it just looks badass. You know they're gonna there's gonna be business in this in this movie. There's gonna be some epic battle sequences, some epic fight scenes going down. Yeah, I'm thinking there's gonna be probably an initial confrontation that they're gonna work into it early on. And then we'll get to the final battle of Arakeen later on. Not even the battle of Arakeen, but the battle, This, you know, the attack on House Atreides probably at the end of the movie. We're close to it, but yeah, we'll get into that later. I said I would discuss like how I think the movie's gonna go later, but yeah, man. Whew. <laughs> this armor's sick because there's, I don't think I've seen, we, we haven't seen anything like this in any of the previous Dune films at all. So, Seeing this, I I really really dig the look of this. Uh, it's so utilitarian looking almost. It's not like super extra. It's not like got a bunch of like digital stuff going on. Not a bunch of like glowing lights or anything like bull crap like Marvel looking stuff. It just looks like, yeah, this is some futuristic armor, and I'm about to like do some serious freaking damage. And there's another one. Wait, let me go to the one of yeah. So here's another one of like. Leto in it and you can see they've got the daggers too i think right there on their sides and the dagger also has a freaking atreides oh <laughs> God, come on oh it's killing me it's killing me i love it i love it I'm, I'm too hyped i can't i can't deal with it i can't deal with it it's too much yes i, I live for it yeah yeah and look you can see here in the background that there's, there's actually a helmet piece there's actually a helmet piece right here that goes over the head so that's super cool man i can't wait to see these in action and you've got to and i know there's going to be more than one pretty badass action sequence if they've got like suited up gear like this and like i said like we were talking about like way earlier like a year ago i think when they were casting all of the the military guys i was like if they're actually casting all these military guys this early and then naming them that means we're really going to have like a lot of battle stuff going on and military stuff going on some pretty significant stuff right and this this armor and seeing how much effort they put into it and making it look super cool and awesome and badass man yeah yeah it's going to be freaking awesome yeah oscar isaac looks freaking sick here he looks badass like a like a freaking beast like a freaking beast insane love the daggers Love the armor. Yeah. But let's get back to that Jessica one we were just looking at. So here, here it's funny because initially I haven't seen that most recent Star Wars movie, but I did remember that like picture everyone was showing 
of like the girl with no personality in like a hood thing, like Darth Vader being all like, I'm evil now. And that's initially what I thought about here. But then, but then I realized it looks a lot like this, the Benny Gesserit from freaking David Lynch, the hoods and like all the robes. And so that's what that's an homage to, I think. And honestly, Rebecca Ferguson looks sick right here. She looks scary. I wouldn't want to be around her. I wouldn't want to be near her. Look at her eyes. These are some piercing Benny Jazzeret eyes right here <laughs> that stare right into your soul. Like, I can't go on enough about how good this freaking casting is, man. The casting is spot on. The casting is freaking spot on. And again, look at, Can I? did I even like emphasize too how good, how good Javier Bardem looks as Stilgar? Come on. This is the best Stilgar that we've ever had, and you all know it. You all know it. There is not a better. We we haven't even seen him act. We haven't even seen him say a single line, and you already know this is the best Stilgar out of any portrayal we've ever had. So yeah, come on now. Yeah, but anyway, back to Jessica. Totally scary. And I was saying earlier, I can't wait to see Jessica be a badass because I always felt like in the adaptations, especially the David Lynch adaptation, they totally like depower her kind of, they totally just kind of like damsel Jessica. Oh, Leto's dead. They, she's kind of a damsel in the David Lynch one. And that's not Jessica in the books at all, right? This is this is a woman of, of the tip top Benny Jesuit breeding stock. She was the Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim's best student. Right. Look at the mission that they put her on to bear the Atreides heir, the most essential heir to their breeding program. Come on. Jessica is a freaking beast. And I'm really hoping they include the scene with her and in, in Thufir Howard where she totally shakes him, totally shows him who's who. And yeah, we got to see Jessica be a super badass. And we got to see the weirding way in action as well. The weirding way is this weird, crazy, awesome Benny Jesuit martial arts that they do where they can kind of almost like move so fast in close quarters that it almost looks like they're teleporting almost weird Benny Jesuit martial arts. Anyway, I got a super chat real quick from Dwayne Olson. Thank you so much for your super chat. Thank you so much. But yeah, Lady Jessica, man, looking, looking awesome, looking awesome here, looking badass, looking scary. Yeah, I'm super cool. I'm super interested in seeing what else they offer us in the coming days. And here we have some more, um, got some more Duncan Idaho going here and he's got his sword here. He's doing some sword play, right? So if you don't know, oh, someone's saying there's a new photo of Chani. If I can find that one um, in a minute, we'll look at that one as well. That's awesome. News breaking right now, new photo of Chani. Anyways, let's talk about this one right here. So if you don't know about Duncan Idaho, he is the Atreides swords master. Right, so the way Dune is different from other science fiction is that they've kind of taken a step back from like handheld weapons um, because they have shields, but the slow blade penetrates the shield. So they fight with daggers and swords because it's just like, yeah. And also um, if you hit a shield with like a laser gun, it has a nuclear effect, which nobody wants that because it's just like, no one wants a nuclear explosion. But yeah, so apparently there's a new Zendaya, but yeah, anyway, let me, before I get to that, this is Duncan Idaho playing with swords because they every great house needs kind of a swords master to train them because they you can't just be trained in hand to gun play. You gotta have swords too because you can't use guns all the time. All right. Now let's see if I can find the new Zendaya picture. Did Lucifer post it? Who posted it? Yep. Yep, he did. It's on Instagram. It's on Instagram, but I can't click on that. Oh God, I gotta find it. Stream yard. Okay, we got we got to go on the quest to hunt down the Zendaya picture. Someone else. All right, guys. Someone else post the link in the comment. Copy the Lucifer link. No, I got it. Never mind. You don't got to do that. Okay, we got I found it. I found it. It's loading. It's loading. <gasps> Whoa, this one's cool. All right, let me share my screen, guys. Actually, let me let me do this real quick. This one is really cool, guys. So a new Zendaya picture as Chani just got posted. And this actually looks like, by my eyes, to be 
a photo on set that she posed for and not necessarily a scene from the movie, but still really cool. It gives you like a full picture. This is the most Chani that I've ever seen her look. All right, hold on guys, I'm putting it in. Putting it in right now. Let's see if we can get to it. Um, how do I do this? How do I do this? Okay. Open folder. The folder says, no, I'm not gonna open, fuck you. <laughs> okay. Why won't the folder open? Okay, it's trying its hardest not to do this. Let me let me do it like this. Share screen. And there we go. There we go. Here's Zendai. Look at this. Look at this. There we go. There we go. So yeah, you can see here she's got like the dagger, which is definitely a Chris knife. It's gotta be a Chris knife. You see, she got it right there, right here. So I'm gonna do this just for laughs. We got to do a red circle over the Chris knife and some arrows pointing to it. You see that, guys? <laughs> you see that Chris knife right there? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So there's a Chris knife. Anyway, so yeah, she looks she looks freaking badass, right? You wouldn't want to see Chani. Chani is an epic character as well, too. People underrate her, underrate the character Chani because of the David Lynch movie where she's like basically not a character. But Chani, you don't want to mess with Chani. She, um, there's a curious, she, she's like almost like Paul's kind of like bodyguard at some point uh, in the Dune book because she's, she's a badass. If you mess with her, she's going to slit your throat. Um, that's just the way Fremen are raised. You're not Fremen. You don't survive in the desert unless you're willing to, you know, kill a motherfucker, basically. I mean, <laughs> like only, only the strongest survive in the deep desert, which is why they're, which is why the Fremen are so, Badass, and that's why rec that's why initially Leto, the Duke Leto, recognizes the fighting potential in the Fremen. And very early on in the story, he sends Duncan Idaho out to kind of get to know the Fremen so that he can potentially kind of incorporate their might into his own, right? Which so Leto Leto actually that, that just shows you how good of a how strategic the Duke Leto is and how intelligent he really was because he saw that potential immediately. Um, whereas other people in the Imperium, like House Carino, never fully recognized the potential of the Fremen. But yeah, Shawnee, what can I say? She looks epic here. Brand new picture just came out apparently. I think this is actually posted on, yeah, Zendaya posted this on her actual Instagram about two hours ago. So what that tells me actually is that we're just gonna, we're about to just be getting a flow of new pictures right now, I think. And it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. But yeah, the Chris knife, guys. The Chris knife. In case you didn't see it. Okay, anyway, we got we got more to talk about. We got more to talk about other than Zendaya. We got to talk about, um, is it time to talk about the main, well, not the main thing, but the thing that everyone's like butthurt about. All right, let's, let's, let's get, let's get into, and also if you've been enjoying the stream so far, hit the like button and that would be greatly appreciated. Help share the stream around. All right. Let's get to it. You all know what it is. You all know what we got to talk about. The first, yeah, super chat. First super chat. The gift of water. Thank you, Scario3. Epic, epic. All right. Let's do this. So, yeah. <laughs> Sharon Duncan Brewster is Layette Kynes. Layette Kynes. And a lot of people are not happy about this. And a lot of people have not been happy about this ever since the rumors started. About 10 months ago, this rumor has been out for a while that she was going to be this character, that she was potentially portraying this character. I didn't know what to think of it at first. I thought, oh, maybe she's somebody else. We don't really know yet. But yeah, so let's let's talk a little bit about Leia Kynes. Right? I think she looks cool. This picture here actually is like, reminds me of some Dune art that I've seen. I think this picture looks cool. Okay, so let's talk about Leia Kynes, right? Leia Kynes, son of Pardo Kynes. Pardo Kynes was the previous planetologist of the planet Arrakis. And he basically discovered what was going on with the planet, that the water was contained. He, he realized that Arrakis used to be kind of wet because he saw like the salt pans and all that stuff. He was like, he figured out what was going on and he realized that the planet could be transformed. And so Leic Kynes carried on, carried on what his father did. Leic Kynes is 
part of the Fremen. He's half Fremen. And um, yeah, he's hanging out in the desert and he's pushing them to do this ecological transformation. But the deal is, and he's, he's also Zendaya's, he's also Zendaya's father. All right. So later on, there's this thing, there's this thing they introduce called ancestral memory. So that's kind of important that certain characters later on have these characters' memories, right? All right. But in, in this, Latkines is not a guy. Latkines is a woman, right? And I have a few reasons that I suspect why they did this, right? I think the reason is because, okay, so a part of Dune, too, is this idea, daughters and mothers, right? You've got the Bene Gesserit sisterhood. They, they've got all this motherhood name type stuff, mother superior, reverend mother. You've got the whole dynamic between the Lady Jessica and Aaliyah at some point. And if you read Dune, Leia Kynes never really even interacts with Chani, right? His daughter. You never really see the two of them together, really, ever. They're not, it, the, 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 the fact that she is his daughter barely even comes up other than like kind of like tangentially, right? So I think that by making this character a woman, they're going to probably build on this whole mother daughter thing. And they're going to push that and push that and push that until the, in, until, well, until things get a little bit more heavy. I don't want to spoil the book, but like shit goes down. And so I see them, what they're doing here is they're using this whole gender swap thing to enrich the character because the character can use some enriching. Honestly, like I said, you don't really know who kinds is that much apart from what he's doing involving the ecological transformation of the planet. And you don't really see him interact with his daughter ever. So I think that when it comes to something like this, if you have a legitimate reason to do it, if you have a reason that's going to expand the narrative, then do it. And I, I trust Denny Villeneuve enough to know that he's not just going to make a random change for no reason, just because whoop de do let's just make a change. If he's going to make a change or he's going to alter something, it's because he's had a vision and he's seen a way that he can make something better or expand upon it. That's all that always happens with an adaptation. And this one in particular, I feel like is a very minor one, especially if it can help out the character, which it probably can. All right. So, yeah. So that's my that's my whole two cents on the whole Leah Kynes thing. I don't get right why people are so upset about it. Just like it's not, you know, it's not it, it's not that big of a deal. It just isn't. It just isn't. Okay. I think that's it for all of the new released photos that I've seen. And then we got the we had that other one from the other day with Paul standing on the beach, which I'm sure you all saw. I don't have it queued up here. But yeah, let's talk about. The, one, the other thing that I want to talk about, which is how, how I think the structure of this movie is going to go, right? How I think it's going to going to flow. So it looks like, well, it is. It has to because the book does as well. It's going to start off on Caladan, right? So Caladan is the ancestral home world of House Atreides. Cal uh, House Atreides has ruled over Caladan for many, many generations. They call it the fiefdom. And Caladan is a is a very peaceful world. It's it's a paradise planet. It's got oceans, beautiful skies, and yeah, it's it's a lovely, lovely place to live. So I think we'll spend some time on Caladan, explaining that place, explaining that Paul spent his first fifteen years there, explaining the connection between House Atreides and Caladan, kind of like building up the dread that kind of awaits for them in House once they get to Iraq is because that's one thing that the book does as well. There's a great sense that something terrible awaits us in Arrakis, right? You have the, the Reverend mother that visits very early on. And she says, she says, yeah, like stuff is going to go down on Arrakis and for the father, nothing. Right. So there's, there's, there's some ominous things that happen that build up to them going to Arrakis. So I'm thinking that they're going to spend quite a while getting to Arrakis and we might not even see Arrakis. Probably, maybe not even up, probably up a, about at the halfway point, I think. We'll be on Arrakis and we'll get to Arrakis and then we'll start moving forward. But then I think they'll probably be, I think, I think, I think before we get to Arrakis, 
I'm thinking that they're probably gonna like add in some kind of altercation of some kind and show some kind of battle sequence somewhere else, some kind of confrontation with the Atreides soldiers, right? Because that's the whole thing. You have to show, not tell, right? The book, it tells us, oh, the Atreides soldiers are so badass. They're so awesome. They're so great. And we just have to like accept it. But I think here that they're going to show that initially and they're going to build it up. The Atreides soldiers are awesome and they're, they're badass. So we're going to see like some kind of fight scene. We have to understand why the emperor is so afraid of House Atreides and why he's afraid of the potential of their soldiers. So I think we'll see that initially. And when you've got, when you've got this badass armor, come on, we've got this. You've got, you've got to give us more than one battle sequence at the end when the Atreides are ambushed. All right. So yeah. Scario says there's a vanity fair quote. Denny Dennis did it for the feminism. Well, that's the vanity fair quote. We don't gotta like that article was badly written in several ways. I don't, I don't, I take that article with the teeny tiniest grain of salt, right? But yeah, anyway, battle sequence early on in the movie, at least. That's my prediction. All right. So I think we'll get to Arrakis. We'll start to see the Fremen a little bit. We'll start to uh, expand upon that a little bit. And I think the movie will probably will build and build and build, build on the character Duncan Idaho, especially build on the character Duke Leto, especially, and then build up, build up on a lot of characters, which might not be necessarily long for this world. Right. And you can, since the movie is split, since this movie is, is, is splitting the book, I'm thinking that one of the final sequences will be the Atreides ambush when the Harkonnens and the emperor attack and, and they, they, they unleash basically a red wedding upon house Atreides. Um, and Paul and Jessica barely escape with their lives. And, you know, other people are in different situations. I won't spoil who goes where, but like certain people die. Other people are moved around in different situations. And it's just very devastating. House Atreides is defeated in the first half of the book. So that's kind of, an epic climax for a movie, I think. House of Trades, we, we lost. We lost. And Jessica and Paul barely survived in the desert. And so I think the movie is probably going to, that'll be the climax. And then it'll wind down, wind, wind, wind down with Jessica and Paul interacting with the Fremen, who they probably interacted with on some level because we had the whole, um, we probably had the kind scene before. And they will probably have some initial reaction, but then, here we'll have like the final reaction where they meet Stilgar and they see that Jessica can do the weirding way and she's got her Bene Gesserit witch ways and they want to be taught. And you, we can see Jessica being joined into the Fremen. Now, I, I haven't read any of like the leaked scripts or any of that junk. This is just my prediction for how I think the movie is going to go down. And then after that, we get, I think what they'll do when it comes to the second movie is that we'll see like, Somewhat of a time jump. I don't know if they're going to go like the full go ahead and jump immediately like the full two and a half years like it does in the book. Um, but we'll see some time jump and we'll see like what Paul and Jessica have been doing with the Fremen. And that movie time could pass over the course of the second film. All right. So that's just like my general vision for how I see like the layout of the movie being. All right. And I did get a super chat. Let's see. Fei June says. I have to wonder, excuse me, I have to wonder what they'll do with all the active thinking that happens in the book. It just explains so much. But yeah, see, that's just the way you have to show and not tell, which is why like like things like adding a battle sequence instead of having in, instead of having a character thinking about like, oh, the emperor fears the Atreides soldiers or something like that. Yeah, you just have to you have to, I guess, Denis Villeneuve and everyone involved has to be creative with presenting these things because we can't, it's not going to work in 2020. Um, and honestly, it didn't work in David Lynch's Dune with the, um, in my opinion, with the over the voice dub over dub monologue things that the voiceover junk that, that for me, that never works. It's like, it's like showing through fear. It's like through fear, Howard, Atreides, Mintat, uh, Gurney, Halleck, and you know, Atreides war master. I'm like, ah, what? Like, stop, show, don't tell. It's just very, it seems seems lazy, especially this day and age. And you've got someone 
as subtle as Denny, I know for a fact that he's not going to do that. So, yeah, he's going to have to find another way. And we'll just see. We'll just have to see and be surprised by it. All right. And I also got another super chat from Classic Comics. Do you think the body armor means no force fields? Interesting. So I, I didn't even consider that. Maybe they could have dropped the shields, but I don't. I, maybe not. Maybe they'll use them in a different way. But shields, the fact that shields exist is important in the Dune universe because of their reaction, because of the reaction that shields have to Leia's guns. That is important at some point. So maybe they didn't completely get rid of shields. But we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know. The armor looks cool, though. The armor looks cool. I'm not hating on it. Yeah. And then there's also the fact that when you are in the deep desert, if you have on a shield, then all the worms are going to be maddened and they're going to come like running and they're going to go crazy. Oh, we got a new member. We got a new member, uh, Ray Thulu. One moment, guys. Had to go check on the dog. Got a new puppy in there. We got a new we got a new YouTube member, Ray Thulu. All right, thank you so much. Yeah, like I said, guys, YouTube memberships are a thing on this channel now. You can totally click the join button. There's like different tiers. There's like Wildling. There's Fade King. There's one other one that I can't think of right now. But if you totally want to join, you get like emojis and badges and a bunch of cool stuff for when I do live streams. And you know, yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. You get some distinction. And also, if you just want to support this channel um, and you like hate Patreon or something and you want to support it this way, then totally do that. It's totally good. All right. What was I talking about? I don't even remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole thing with the shields. Yeah. So, yeah, worms, desert shields. Like if you if, if you try and turn on a shield in a desert, all you're going to do is make a worm come and kill you, basically. So maybe the Atreides figured this out and they're just like, we're just going to have armor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Oh, someone says, I need Harkonnen content. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Let's talk about what we haven't seen. Let's talk about what we haven't seen. So nothing from House Carino. In fact, nothing from any of the other houses. So nothing from House Carino, which is the royal house, the imperial house. So that would be um, that would be the Emperor Shaddam IV and his daughter, Irlan Carino, and also Win Sashia Carino, who's a character later on, though. Um, so that would be them, the Lion Throne. I really want Charles Dance. I think a lot of people want, Char want Charles Dance. That'd be really cool. And then also the Carino soldiers, which would be the Sardaukar, which are kind of known as the most ferocious soldiers in the world. But you got the Atreides soldiers who are kind of like building up their thing and they're like getting better maybe, perhaps. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that whole thing, we haven't seen any of that. So we got to see that eventually. I'm thinking that the Emperor will probably appear in the movie. Like, I think what would be cool about the Emperor would be just to show him right at the end. Right at the end, you have the Emperor. He's like, yeah. And you re you know, they, they could even do, here's a cool thing they could do. Because not everybody that's going to see this has read the books like most of us have, right? If you're watching this channel. Um, they could do a thing where they keep it a secret that the emperor was involved into the very end. And then you just see like the emperor being like, crap, but the, yeah, like, yeah, we've defeated house of Trades, and yeah, here we go. Yeah. They're dead. And the Baron's like, yeah, they're dead. That would be so cool. I think. So just show them right at the end. And that'd be cool. And you can see, like, you can see Irulan somewhere in the background, maybe someone doing something. But yeah, that'd be cool. And then, yeah. Also, we haven't seen any like Baron stuff, no house Harkonnen stuff. We haven't heard anything. We know that Stellan Skarsgård is the Baron, but we haven't we haven't heard anything about Fade Ratha. We know that uh, Dave Batista is the Beast, but Fade, Fade Ratha is is another one that's up there along with the Emperor and Irulan. So yeah, who who's going to be portraying these characters? That that'll be that's super exciting. I haven't seen anything like that. We haven't really seen the scale of the desert yet, and we have not seen anything as far as like the epic legendary great beast of the desert, the sandworms. We haven't seen any sandworms, but the first sandworm image, I'm just sure it's going to be like insane. I can't wait to see. Oh my God. Cause you know, modern CGI, this is like the thing. This is what it was made for. Um, looks like I got another super chat. Let me just get to that real quick. It says, 
maybe the shield system is built into the armor. I want to see more of the Imperial Sardaukar and more of House Carino. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. More Sardaukar, House Carino. I, I definitely want to see the look of them. I definitely want to see the look of them. Interesting. Because I want to see if they are going to portray them as more decadent. Expe especially the, bar the Baron and, and the Harkonnens, because they are exceptionally decadent. Um, so, another super chat. Count Fenring and the Lady Margot would be cool to see. Yeah, that's something that I think they would probably say for the second movie, right? I'm thinking that in the second movie, we'll see a lot more of the Harkonnens. We'll, we'll, and we'll probably see more of the Emperor as well. Whereas this movie is really the movie that's about... This movie, I think, will be about House Atreides and its downfall, right? The downfall well, or the seeming downfall of House Atreides is what I'm, is what I'm picking up here. So, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. It's going to spend a lot of time building up who these characters and who they are and building up that they actually are good people. I mean, as good as you can be in a world like this. Um, but yeah, they actually, they actually care about people and they care about the people that they're put to rule over. Right. And establish that and establish their connection between each other and the fact that they care about each other and all that stuff. So I think that's what we'll spend a lot of the movie doing, which is important. It's important to build these characters in that way. Andrew Harding, thank you so much for your super chat. Are you thinking Fade and Raban might be combined into the same character, or is there something of a surprise with the casting? I definitely don't think that. Um, one, Dave Batista is a little too young to be Fade. So um, yeah, we gotta have we gotta have they're 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 separate characters. The characters are too different, I think, to combine them in that way. I think that's something that Game of Thrones would do mistakenly, right? And it would be a, an annoying thing that I would complain about, right? Combining two characters that are too different. I don't think they're similar enough. Um, and I don't think they are connected to the story in the same way enough for them to be combined. Um, I didn't mean he's too young. I mean, he's too old. Dave Bautista is a little bit on the older side to be um, Fade. Is Fade cast? I don't think Fade has been cast yet. I don't think we've gotten any news about that yet. Have I, is there something I have not seen? Did get another super chat from Matt O. How do you think this movie thematically will fit into Denny's other films? Do you think this movie is going to be really dark and violent? I do. I do. Here's the thing. That's actually a good question. I don't know if we're going to get an R, but I would, I would honestly, I wouldn't mind an R rating here. They, well, dark, dark is definite. Like from just like the nature of Dune, truly the core of that whole series is very dark. I think you're dealing with some very dark themes. And then, like you said, Denny Villeneuve loves to go kind of dark with his movies. And then what I'm seeing here from all these images from brooding Paul to just like the look of the whole thing. Yeah, I'm seeing some, I'm seeing very dark stuff. And then what we had, what Oscar Isaac said not too long ago about it being like kind of brutal and, and brutalist. And, you know, it's like, kind of disturbing on some level. And you know, you had Denny Villeneuve that said like like a year ago that this is Star Wars for adults. So that those are really strong statements, I think, and hint that yeah, we're gonna see there's there's definitely gonna be some kind of darkness to this movie for sure. And someone says, even though Fade shows him in chapter two, his mid-book gladiator scene will be amazing introduction to a new villain in part two. I agree, right? Which is why I'm thinking that House that House Harkonnen will appear largely in the second half and i think they could open it up with that awesome knife battle scene where he's killing the slave and you can see how truly messed up this guy is really like like initially i wouldn't doubt i wouldn't doubt honestly that they've already filmed some scenes with him even if he's not gonna be major in this movie i think they've probably filmed like a little bit I like I, like i said i'm thinking we're gonna get like a final scene final little shot emperor baron maybe fade off somewhere, maybe Irulan off somewhere, and we're going to see them, and then that's it for the most part. But we've got to get... But honestly, now that I honestly think about that too, we've got to have some at least build up of the Baron up until that point because we have to know that he's plotting against House Atreides. So we'll definitely see the Baron a lot, or at least we'll have to see him a significant amount to really kind of hone, hone, hone in that there is a villain, there is someone to hate in this. So yeah, the Baron is someone that we have to see initially. And if we show the Baron, now that I'm just thinking about this, we kind of have to show Fade too, right? 
at least once, unless we're just going to see like Fade and Raban, not Fade and Raban, but unless we're going to see the Baron and Raban initially, and then they're just going to say Fade for like a later time. They could do that because Fade's role kind of comes into play more later on. But yeah, there's a few ways they could do this potentially. But yeah, now that I'm thinking about this, really, we can't save the Baron reveal to the end, but we can totally save the, and, and there's no point in saving the Baron reveal to the end, but we can totally save the Emperor reveal to the end, and that would actually be cool. Another super chat. Thank you so much, Keith Willis. I wonder, will the release date be pushed back? All the big summer movies now shadow the original release date. That's an interesting point, too, that I didn't think about. The fact that all of these movies have been pushed back to being closer to when Doom was already scheduled to. But, you know, honestly, I think this movie can compete. I do. Because, look, I don't want to, like, hey, if you're, like, excited. But, like, I don't I don't care about Black Widow. I don't care about any of this other stuff. There's, there's, there's almost nothing that's coming out this year that I care about other than this. That's just me personally, but like, I feel like if this wasn't coming out, there wouldn't be something else that I'd be interested in. It would just be like, man, I'm like burnt out on superhero stuff. I'm burnt out on like Star Wars and, and fantastic, Be whatever else is coming out. I'm burnt out on all of the same endless reboots, endless franchise of this. Nothing ever changes. Nothing is ever really different. They all really end in the same way. And I'm excited to see something new. And I think a lot of people, a lot of audiences are excited to see something new. Like a lot of these images got released and a lot of people that have never even heard of Dune are, are seeing them and being like, oh, this looks cool as crap. This looks super awesome. Like, I, I want to see this movie. What is this about? It looks different. It looks new. It looks unique. So yeah, I think, I think people are ready for Dune and I think Dune can compete. There's a lot of excitement that I've seen building around it. And I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm ready for it. Okay. How do you think they will show Paul's powers if any in this first film and they'll show them for sure but you know like i said um uh, they've got to be subtle i i think it would be cool to i think some trippy like some really really trippy scenes would be cool that don't go over the top with like i don't know denny just has to employ a certain subtlety um because it, it wasn't, to me, it wasn't, because you look at how they were accomplished in the David Lynch movie again. It was just like, show some cryptic images, voiceover on top, blah, blah, blah. Even in like Game of Thrones too, it's like the same as that. It's like, show some cryptic images real quick with like Bran. It's like, voiceover, look for me under a tree. So, um, I mean, we just have to count on the artistry and the subtlety of the people behind this. And, you know, yeah that vi visions visions is a hard one to do i think and to make it to to try and make it not look like everything else you know what i mean because you want it to look like interesting but i i know i did read something about paul having early on about like they definitely are going to include paul's like terrible apoc apocalyptic vision so at least some flashes of this at least some hints of this they can do it like i said in a more subtle way do it in a way that kind of Maybe not even by like showing it directly, but have something that represents what he's seeing. I mean, there's there's a lot of there's there's a lot of cool ways it can go. I love your hype, Quinn. I hope you don't get disappointed. Well, I hope so too. I hope I don't get disappointed too. All right, guys. So we have explored all of these new images. Everything is super exciting. Do you guys have any more questions about what's happening in the Dune world? I mean, there's not a lot of new information out. There's a lot of, the, there's the pictures and then there's the Vanity Fair article. But like I said, take both of those with a grain of salt. Um, <laughs> I noticed that a lot of people that write articles tend to Wikipedia Dune or like read a five minute summary or something and then write a whole article as if they know what they're talking about. And there's often like a million mistakes about the themes and ideas and what characters can do. I mean, Vanity Fair, I know this is like a, a, a high quality, kind of an upscale magazine, whatever it is, but you know, it's this article is bad in my opinion, just in the way just it's written. But yeah, yeah, the article's there <laughs> if you want to read it. Someone says, make Fade a girl. See, no, no, see, making Fade, see, that's, uh, 
I'm glad you said that because that gives me a chance to talk about this. Making Fade a girl would be one of the things I would complain about that because that would actually affect the story. Making Fade a girl would totally affect the story in messed up ways, right? Because the whole reason that the Ben and Jesuit were so mad and so pissed off at the Lady Jessica was because she had a son when she was supposed to have a daughter. And their whole plan was to braid, was to was to breed the Benny was to breed the freaking Benny Jesuit freaking Atreides daughter to the Harkonnen son. And then from that union, they would have produced the true Wizard Hadarak, who was bred and raised under true Benny Jesuit conditioning and under their control, and the plan would be fulfilled. But if you made Fade a girl, then they could still just totally kind of do that if they wanted to, because they could totally just make them breed. So yeah, that would totally mess things up. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. But I look at something like Leah Kynes and it's like, this is really affected. I don't see why you're complaining that much. But yeah, you thought you had me with that one, but you didn't. <laughs> uh, Acute Octagon says, Quinn, ideas, my theory is that they are going to have Stilgar be Chani's dad and Leah Kynes be the mother. Do you think there's a chance? I think I said something like that um, a while ago when they first potentially announced this. And like I said, it totally makes sense in enriching and connecting the characters in ways that they weren't connected before. Because Stilgar is kind of a, a he is kind of a father figure for Chani at some point, but to make him actually her father just makes almost too much sense. It makes the most sense in the world, actually. So yeah, I, I like the idea of Stilgar, Leah Kynes being a thing, and Chani being their daughter because it just connects the characters and just the way that they weren't connected before. And it just it's just one of those thing, just one of those things that can just build upon, just to build upon that connection and expand upon them even more. So yeah, that's something that I like to see, right? So if if they if they do do that and they expand upon the character in these ways then I'll be happy. But look, here's the thing, guys. I've never been the person that's just going to be like, going to watch something and be like, I love it regardless. Anyway, I love this so much, even if it's terrible. If I watch this movie and I and I see Leia Kynes and they do nothing to expand upon this connection with Chani and they do nothing to like expand the character or make it better, then I will <laughs> express my opinion and I will be kind of like, why did you even bother altering the character in all the in this weird way if you weren't actually going to make it matter right so that's 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 always been my thing it has to matter and it has to matter for the better right even with game of thrones i always thought i keep comparing it to game of thrones because it's another example of a book series that i loved that was adapted and then like later not adapted so well um even in game of thrones there were certain changes that were pretty significant that were like good right like did danny and astapor releasing all three of her dragons and well, releasing just like, well, Danny and Asapur, um, and them keeping it a secret that she knew what the guy was saying the entire time. So when she releases the dragon, one of them, instead of just all three in the book, it's still, it, it might even be even more epic than it is in the book because it's so well done. So like when it, when you make a change and make it better, then you got nothing to complain about. Right. And I think, yeah, like I said, Denny Villeneuve is not something, he's not someone, he's not a hack, right? That's the thing. People are used to Hollywood hacks, right? People are used to Hollywood hacks that just insert things into movies for like whatever, some stupid agenda or just to like uh, fan service to this person or whatever. Denny Villeneuve has never, ever, ever been that person. He's never been that director. He is not a hack. He's always made art. He's always made films that challenge you to think. Like go back and watch every single thing this guy's ever done even from like little short films that he's made there's this one short film that i can't think of the name of it right now but it's like all these people are like eating at this table consuming more and more and more and more and they keep falling through the floor and it's all about to me the degradation of like society and how it continues and how eventually everyone eats even if you weren't eating in the beginning everyone else is going to eat so you might as well eat as well and it was like it was so just like it was so good and so much of his work all of his work is so layered in meaning and depth consistently that when I heard he was making do and I was like, yes, next floor is what it's called. Next floor is what that's called. But yeah. Yeah. When I heard he was making do and I thought perfect, perfect because this guy's ruling science fiction right now. 
he has made some films that have knocked my socks off. And, you know, he's just, he's, he's great. And, and then most importantly, I think, or at least just as important, I think, is the fact that he loves the novel. And he says, Dune is the one thing he's wanted to adapt for so long. And when somebody has passion like that, you know, it shines through. <laughs> and someone says, Rebel Wilson as the navigator. I don't think so. That's another curious thing that we got to see how they're going to do the navigators. The navigators are like these mutant people that live in kind of fish tanks and they're all spice evolved. But yeah, guys, if you've been enjoying the stream, hit the like button, guys. Hit the like button. It really helps me out. Thank you guys so much for watching. We've gone over the pictures. I don't want to go on for too long and stretch this out. We've been going for an hour. It's been super exciting. Hit the join button if you want to support this channel. Click the Patreon link if you want another way. But definitely hit the like. Um, and yeah, guys, I'm so excited for Doom. I can't wait to react to the trailer when it comes out, when it's released. Um, and yeah, make sure you subscribe for more Dune videos. Check out my ultimate guide to Dune, my whole breakdown on the whole Dune book series. It's a very complicated book series as well. Um, yeah, working on Chapter House Guide to Dune, which is the final book in the original saga. And then after that, I'm gonna move on to you know the Brian Herbert ones. I'm gonna do Sandworms and Hunters of Dune. Um, in in a separate, it'll be Ultimate Guide to Expanded Dune. So it won't it won't be technically the same series, but it'll be in the same playlist once I get on those. And so, yeah, lots of new Dune things coming to this channel and to the world, and it's all very exciting. Thank you guys so much for watching, um, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. I love you guys.